Hi everyone, Graham Couch here from the Lansing State Journal along with my Detroit Free Press colleague Chris Solari after Michigan State's 51-17 uh, to 17 win over Western Michigan here at Spartan Stadium. That's right, 51 points uh, for Michigan State. And there is a rumor somewhere that I said I'd shave my head if they ever scored 50 that, points this season. That's I don't, interesting. I think that's being made up. I don't recall saying that. That seems really I dicey. I would, ne tape. I would never shave my head. I would never, and I wouldn't. That yeah, one, I wouldn't, you say that like there's something wrong with it. I wouldn't joke about things like that. I, <laughs> This is See, now you're going to get me in a laugh moment. Now, I got, now you got some, some screen grabs. I would, yeah, I would, if somebody finds that tape, I'd be very interested. Um, obviously, a, a huge offensive outburst for Michigan State. Very important game. It, it's, it's hard to tell exactly what Western Michigan is defensively, but they were a seasoned club with a lot of guys back. Um, and I think more than anything, not only did they run the ball well, the offensive line you know, looked significantly better. Um, some of that had to do with the type of defense that was being played. The passing game found itself over the top. But it all represents sort of this relief and hope, sense of hope for this team that they needed offensively. Two plays defined this game, and they were the first two plays of the game. I mean, you, you see Brian Lewerke go play action, go deep to Daryl Stewart. I mean, Lewerke throws for over 300 yards. Stewart has a monster game with a career of 185 or somewhere in that range. Um, so you see the rapport is there in the passing game. And those were two guys that were both hurt last year. I mean, this, this was reminiscent of that Northwestern game uh, two years ago when the work he threw for over 400 yards and, and Stewart had a career day with 11 catches and 98 yards. It was very similar to that, that you could see that that connection is there. But then the next play, Elijah Collins comes out, runs over the right side, and for as much grief as Jordan Reed got uh, against Tulsa for struggling in that game, they ran at Jordan Reed's side all day, and Elijah Collins was the beneficiary of some great outside blocking from him and Collins turns it up for about 29 more yards, and all of a sudden, there's the passing game and a running game and some blocking, and that's where you get these points. Yeah, it's amazing I mean, how that all works together. Collins, uh, four of his first eight carries were for at least eight yards, and to put that in perspective, the 18th carry last week went for seven, and that was the longest run by a running back last week uh, at, at, at that point. It was a totally different game. It, it, Brian Lewerke said when I asked him, it's just a describe what that does for him and everything. It just changes everything when they're able to run the football like that. And he looked really sharp today. I think that was that was important. I mean, they need him to be, because there are going to be games still where I think they're going to struggle to run the football. They need him at times to, to carry them and carry them in big moments. And Daryl Stewart, you know, there's a guy who, when healthy, has been very productive at times in his career. And that sort of number is overshadowed a little bit by anytime you have a redshirt freshman running yeah. back who rushes for 192. But that was the, that's like a Plaxico Burress day. You know, statistically, that would have been celebrated in, in other years, and, and, and they've had a few of those that people have come kind of accustomed to. But that, that's yeah. a really big deal that a guy comes through with that sort of day. Well, and I think it, this is, this game probably is more of a cautionary tale for both games, both yeah. the Tulsa game and in terms this of Western Michigan yeah. game. Don't get too overboard on this reaction, just like you shouldn't have gotten too overboard in the Tulsa reaction. But it, the, the truth probably lies somewhere in between, I think, with this offense. I think they're going to have games where the run game can, can do that. Uh, they're going to have games where the pass game can do that. There will be rare instances like this, uh, <clears throat> Illinois maybe, where they can put them both together. What's the, what's like the clear this. throw at Illinois? Sorry, I had something like that. Oh, I thought you were making but, fun of my prediction for 2013. Uh, maybe. But, um, but, but that's the thing is that if you get at least one side of that going at, at this point, what you need to do is put up at least 22 to 24 points a game with this defense. And this defense for the first unit was relatively smothering at times against the run. Um, had some moments in the past game yeah. where, where they got picked apart a little bit, but but th that's the difference, I think, in between the quarterback they faced. Much like the defense that Michigan State faced and Brian Lewerke faced last week with that 3-3-5 was yeah. a significant difference than facing what, what Western Michigan presented. No question. I, yeah, the defense did get hit a few times, and they were, you know, you, you sort of take this defense for granted a little bit after mm -hmm. the way they finished last season, the way they looked last week. Um, but, but John Wasink is a terrific quarterback. He maybe, I mean, he's only 6'2", but he may be an NFL. The, uh, the, the tight end Western Michigan has an NFL prospect. They've got, they've got some, some, some really, really quality players. Yeah, and they Bellamy's a good deal. running back. Yeah. I mean, he's yep, got absolutely. some speed, and he had 44, 44 total yards. I, yeah. mean, and that's, I mean, that's that's a lot against Michigan State's That's State a defense. lot against Michigan State's defense, and, you know, they're still in, in the, the minus for the season. Yeah, no, no, no question. I, I, I think the story, though, here is I think this is the most important offensive performance, offensive outburst for this team since October 5th, 2013 at Iowa. 
when they were really possible. struggling and yeah. all of a sudden they had this. Now, that was a, probably a more seasoned Iowa club, a Big Ten game where there had been a whole month of it and you had this deep. But the way things were after last week and after last year, it, I mean, in the way D'Antonio sort of said his players did not yeah. meet the challenge and they heard it. And, and Brian Lewerke talked about that today. He, he left that press conference and went to a team meeting where they heard the same thing. If they had shown up and struggled the same way tonight, I, you know, then where do you go from there? And so I think this, in that sense, was, was incredibly yeah. important. Most points since they put up 55 on Penn State. Yeah. Uh, kind of the the glorious end of that 2015 season, and Which because then there was, was embarrassing that it had been that long, right? Yeah. But there had been this, there were the struggles yeah. in that Iowa game because that was such a hard fog game, and then everything that came after yeah. that. Um, you know, there were times I think, you know, the the, the Holiday Bowl was the last time they scored six touchdowns yeah. in a game, and you know this, they've had moments where they look like they could turn this corner. Um, so that's kind of why you can't really jump the gun just yet and say this offense has found itself and is going to end up on that 2014 level. No, I, I do think that there are positive signs in the schedule, especially next week against a, an Arizona te State team that struggled against Sacramento yeah. State, gives them a chance to slow build into the Big Ten. No, but there's tape now too. There's tape, there and, is. And, and, and so that that is there's tape on Elijah Collins and there's tape on this offensive line. What works, what doesn't. Mm -hmm. I certainly what the problems Tulsa created. I, I think. Teams, even if they don't play that defense, will try and replicate that as, yeah. as, as, as best they can. But also, Michigan State's done some things on tape that teams are going to have to think about. And they've shown some things, some some quality that I, I think was just important. So I thought that I thought Brad Salem was better tonight too. I thought they were crisp. I thought they were oh yeah everything the the, the the tempo, the creativity. He really seemed in a rhythm, and and that that showed. This looked a lot more like the offense that that they promised Michigan State fans. Yeah. And you know there was a rousing cheer for them at halftime when they went off this time. Certainly a much different in in a little more than a week and a day than than what they saw at the Tulsa game. What they couldn't do in eight months, they did in a week, sort of, I guess, for whatever reason. Um, we'll have complete coverage at freep.com, lsj.com, greenandwhite.com. Thanks for watching.